Hi, Chris here from Dot Product for a tutorial on scale bar targeting in Phi 3D in this elevator maintenance room. But before we go into the full setup that I have here in this room, I'd like to pause the video for a second and go through the purpose of scale bar targeting and how you should be setting up your scene with targets. So scale bar targeting is a recommended workflow in Phi 3D in which you automatically increase the accuracy of your scan by specifying known distances within the scene using checkerboard targets and the measured distances between their center points. So at a minimum you will need two targets in your scene and a known distance between them, but ideally you will want to have three target pairings in the scene spanning the X, Y, and Z axis of your scene. And each of these target distances should be the maximum length possible, so in a room scenario like this you really want floor to ceiling, wall to wall, across all three axes. And lastly, it should be noted that while some targets may be close to each other, for example the end of the x-axis with the end of the z, you don't want to use those point-to-point -point distances. Only use those maximum distances. Do not input distances between close targets. So now that we've gone through the reasons for scale bar targeting and some quick setup tips, let's go ahead and see where I set up my targets and start a scan of this room. So here we have target 118, and on the other side of the room target 119 across our x-axis. And then across the Y, we have target 108 and target 105. And on the Z, we have target 101 and target 120. So you need to measure the exact center point to center point distances for all three axes using a tape measure, handheld disto, or other measurement tool. And jot them down like so, so you can input them after you finish your scan. And now I'm going to start my scan. So I'll switch to the tablet screen and hit start mapping. As you see, I am still using April tags in my scene that turn red automatically. We recommend you always use April tags. But I also want to make sure I turn these checkerboard targets nice and green because that's what I'm going to be using for my scale bar targeting after I finish my scan. So I'm going to pan around, capture the entire room using the standard method, paint everything green and yellow, loop back over the April tags, and make sure that I return back to my same starting point and turn those April tags red again. And then I hit finish mapping once I've completed my scan. So now that our scan is finished processing, we're going to go ahead to the Targets tab on the top here. And it's going to detect any of these checkerboard targets in the scene automatically and show them frame by frame. We see targets detected in 54 frames. So next I'm going to hit Manage Targets. And here we see a couple options. So you would use the Load slash Save button if you had already created a .csv file with your target IDs and distances. That's an optional workflow that can be done somewhere like Excel or ES File Explorer here on the tablet uh, to create the file separately. For more on that workflow, please see page 47 of the manual. However, especially for scale bar targeting, it's really easy to actually create that file here within Phi 3D. So we're going to actually just hit New and add those target IDs and distances here in Phi 3D. So I hit New and then Target to start adding these target IDs. And now type in target 118 and then I need to hit unsurveyed target and hit create. Now I hit new again, target, and repeat the process for each of my targets in the scene. So now 119 and so on. Creating an unsurveyed target ID for each of the six targets that I have in my scene. So now I'm creating my last one, number 120, unsurveyed target again for the sixth target. So now I'm gonna hit new again and we're going to add the target distance this time. So I tap target distance. And now I see two options here. So I'm going to leave 118 and change the second to 119. And then type in the exact distance that I measured from target 118 to target 119. This is in inches, which you can specify on the targets tab as you see in the background here. Now I do it again. For the second point to point distance, I'm going to switch from target 108 and then now you'll see I can't actually scroll down far enough so I need to tap the down button twice to remove that type window now go back and select target 105 and then tap to type again now I can fill in the exact distance between 108 and 105 now I hit new again, target distance, and I add my third distance here so again we run into that same issue so I tap down twice, remove that and select my targets first from 101 to 120. Now I can go ahead and go back and type in my distance. 
And there we have it. You'll see all of our unsurveyed targets and at the bottom the distance between each pairing. So now I hit use for targeting and here I see every frame with a target. I'll tap the first one and then now I'm actually going to tap the target itself that I see in the scene. It'll automatically lock into the center and I hit set target ID and tap 118 to specify this target. Then hit back and repeat frame by frame. So set target ID 118 back again tap the target, set target ID, 118, back. Now I'm gonna to continue to scroll through each of these frames and set the target ID for each unique target in the scene. You can select the same target in multiple frames as I just did, but you can only do one target per frame. So if you do see multiple targets in a single frame, you wanna select whichever one appears more centered or more clearly in the frame. So I'm just scrolling through here. This is now a different target here. So I'm gonna tap the center just like I have earlier and set target ID 105. You do wanna make sure that you've captured each target in at least a couple different frames and the more the better. So I'm just gonna scroll through here and select every target in every frame that I see it in. So I'm going through rapid fire here and selecting one target per frame. For every frame here where I see a recognized scale bar target in the scene. And as I mentioned earlier, you want to capture as many as possible. So just go through and specify rapid fire one by one. If you have a target that's bleeding off the edge, you should ignore that. Um, or if you have one that's a little blurry, you should ignore that. But otherwise, you should select each target in at least a few frames. Here I'm selecting every single one, which is ideal. However, in a small room like this, you may be fine just selecting each target in a few frames as long as you've gotten each one. Now I'm just going to scroll back up and check to make sure there weren't any targets that I missed. I'll pass on this one because it's too far away, too blurry, too slanted. So scrolling up, everything else looks pretty good. Here's one more, again, bleeding off the side of the screen, so I'm going to pass on that one. Now before we finish here, I want to double check my units. Decimal inches is correct. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit the Optimize tab. And before I hit Global Optimization, now I need to go to Targeting Mode and select the drop down for Scale Bar Targeting. And that's it. Now I can hit Global Optimization, use April Tags, and let it process. As soon as this finishes processing, we'll see all the blurriness in the unoptimized scan removed based on April Tags Optimization and a much more accurate data set overall based on the target to target distances that we've entered. And there we have it. We see a much cleaner, crisper scan based on the April Tags Optimization and a much more reliable, accurate result based on the exact scale bar distances that were implemented during the optimization of the scan. So I know now that my point to point between each of those targets is as specified and that every other point within my scene is referenced based on those exact target distances. So now to verify that, I'm going to first set my coordinate system, which is something you should always do to reference your data set. So I'll set my 0, 0, 0 on the floor, my Z straight up, and my X out of the wall. So now that I've referenced my data, I can go to the Measure tab and change to frame view in the top right corner. Now I can tap each frame to select a measurement point or a target center using the snap to detected targets option here on the right. So I'm going to select that and then tap new measurement and now tap the target. And similar to earlier, it automatically locks into the center point for my measurement. So now I go back and then scroll to a new frame. I'm looking now for target 119. That was target 118 that I already selected. Here it is on the other side of the room. So now I tap the center of that target, automatically locks into the center of each and gives me that exact point to point distance of 140.3 inches. So that lines up with our measurement. That's exactly what we were looking for out of the scale bar targets. And that's gonna reference every other point in the scene as well. So that's a wrap on scale bar targeting. If you have more questions, please visit dotproduct3d.com or contact support at dotproduct3d.com.